Today we go to Lebanon, the site of one of the lesser known campaigns of the Second World War. The town of Merjayun was captured by the 25th Australian Infantry Brigade on the 11th of June, but was retaken by Vichy French forces four days later. The Australians weren't dissuaded, however, and worked to win it back. On the 19th of June, an Australian advance was stopped by a Vichy French armoured counterattack. Lieutenant Roden Cutler, an officer with the 2nd 5th Field Regiment, took a small party of men and occupied a nearby house to help coordinate artillery. Discovering that the building's phone line had been cut, he went outside again, under fire, and fixed it, allowing communication between himself and the Australian guns. French quickly counterattacked this position with tanks and infantry, killing two men in the house, but Lieutenant Cutler and another unwounded man were able, with a Bren gun and anti-tank gun, to drive off first the infantry and finally the tanks. Once the French had left, he organized the evacuation of wounded men, then moved even further into Merjayun to set up another outpost. After some success in spotting for artillery, including noting the road by which Vichy vehicles were arriving, an enemy counterattack left him cut off in the town. He waited until nightfall before returning to Australian lines. Four days later, Lieutenant Cutler went forward again, this time with a 25-pound gun, to find and destroy a French post that had been holding up the Australians' advance. He succeeded and the attack continued. Mayor Jayoon was recaptured for the last time the next morning. Twelve days later, on the 6th of July, Lieutenant Cutler was at Damour when French machine gun fire was holding up the Australian attack. Setting up a new outpost, he went out under heavy fire to bring a phone line when he was wounded in the leg. Fortunately for him, he wasn't brought back for treatment until the next day and he ended up losing that leg. This injury cut short his army career, which, like many men, had started just after the outbreak of war in 1939. He went on to the civil service instead, enjoying many overseas jobs, and finally ending up as governor of New South Wales. Unlike Wing Commander Edwards, he held this position for a record 15 years, finally stepping down in 1981. He finally died in 2002.